Hello everyone, welcome to Money Control. We are back with Tech Up, a weekly podcast for the latest in gadgets, personal technology, AI and everything in between. I am Abhas Sharma and today we are unpacking all the major announcements made by Google at its developer conference last week. We'll talk about Gemini's Glow Up, a new deep think mode, smart glasses that might actually be smart this time and some massive swings that Google has taken at Generative AI. Let's begin with Gemini 2.5. Gemini 2.5 has now got a thinking cap. Google's latest large language model now comes with deep think mode. Here's what it actually means. Instead of spitting out quick responses, deep think gives Gemini more processing power and time to tackle the harder questions. Be it coding, complex math, reasoning through multi-step problem, it's now better equipped to handle it all. Now in theory, this, mo this mode lets the AI explore multiple hypotheses before giving you an answer. In practice, it's aimed to mimic how humans think and not just recall. We are now actually getting closer to a model that can reason and not just autocomplete. But what does this mean from a user's standpoint? For starters, you can expect longer answers, there might be more caveats and perhaps even a little philosophy thrown in when you ask it why your particular code will not compile. Google has also put a new mode in search. Google is putting Gemini right inside your search bar. With AI mode in search, we are now moving from the old 10 blue links model to something more conversational. You can actually now ask nuanced complex questions and get summaries, insights and even decision support directly in your search results. Google is calling it a fundamental shift and it certainly looks like that. Because this isn't just a chatbot which has been bolted on top of Google search. This is the rethink of how we use the web for search. I'll give you an example. For example, if you have to buy a DSLR camera, what would you rather, what would you put in the search bar? Perhaps the best DSLR under rupees 50,000? With the new AI search mode, you can ask what's a good camera for a beginner wildlife photographer who wants portability. What search powered by Gemini will do is that it will understand the question and respond. Not like earlier when it just redirected you. But the big question and perhaps a rather touchy topic is will it send traffic to the actual creators behind the content it summarizes? That's food for thought for publishers, lawmakers and a few other stakeholders. Google is taking another swing at smart glasses. Google is back in the smart glasses game. But do you remember Google Glass? Yeah, well, we actually all tried to forget. But now with Android XR, a new operating system that will power smart glasses from various brands, Google is taking another swing in this category. What's the idea? Well, like most things Google these days, it is about Gemini. Google wants to put Gemini right in front of your eyeballs. You will get context aware overlays, real time translations, email summaries or even help identify what you're looking at. Unlike glass, these actually look like more of a fashion accessory than something you'd wear at perhaps a Star Trek convention. Paired with Samsung's project Mohan, this isn't just a side project for Google. It is a legitimate second attempt at a heads up computing future. Now, in the last seven days or so, this is something which has genuinely gone viral. Videos created by AI. And on the generative media front, Google just dropped VO3 and Imagine 4 along with a new tool called Flow, which brings it all together. Imagine 4 improves image generation, especially textures and readable text while VO3 goes further. It does video and audio generation better than before. You can actually generate a full scene with consistent characters, realistic motion and even voice. 
but what does flow do with flow creators can build build full video sequences with continuity extend scenes and even edit within an ai timeline some might be worried about that this could be the beginning of the end for traditional production pipelines others might see this as a new cre creative renaissance especially for indie creators and game studios if you are a youtuber or a solo filmmaker this might be the first time you can punch at above pro level without spending a bomb some of the examples that google showed were quite unbelievable there have been many viral videos created by vo3 and they do not look like they have been made by ai now let's talk about gemini live which now comes supercharged by project astra what this does is that it turns your phone into a real time assistant point your camera and gemini can see what you see identify objects answer questions even understand context combine that with its ability to detect tone and emotion from your voice you are looking at an assistant that doesn't just respond it actually gets you it's also smart enough to ignore background chatter so yes it won't freak out if your toddler is screaming while you're asking for rec restaurant recommendations or having a normal conversation what google showed at io 2025 is that we are inching towards ai that is more perceptive more helpful and more human google has played every card almost every card it has it has ai that reasons smart glasses that might actually be smart and tools that could enhance creativity but as always the question isn't what the tech can do it's how we all choose to use it now moving on to our next segment after years of begging mocking and sideloading whatsapp has finally landed on the ipad officially yes the world's most used messaging app is no longer ghosting apple's tablet the app works as a companion to your phone syncing messages calls and media across devices much like whatsapp does on desktop but this time it has been optimized for the bigger screen bigger screen with a split view layout and multitasking support it took meta long enough but the arrival is more than welcome especially for those who use ipads for work but now that whatsapp for ipad is here how do you get the most out of it to help with that i have with me shorya shubham a resident diy expert with tips for getting whatsapp on ipad to really work for you welcome to the show shorya thank you avas for having me here so you know now that whatsapp for ipad is actually here could you tell us what is the easiest way to set up what whatsapp on ipad for someone say who's never used it on multiple devices so uh, abhas uh, for starters anything uh, related to app on an apple ecosystem the easiest way is to go to app store search for the app and download it and that same thing applies to uh, whatsapp app as well so all you have to do is go to app store search for uh, whatsapp app and then download it by authenticating by your password or fingerprint right once you are done the app will be installed all you have to do is open the app and then start pairing it via linked devices because the version uh, whatsapp has on the ipad is more like a companion version of it uh, rather than the so called native version where, where you can use a separate uh, mobile number to set it up and right. start using it as an stand alone whatsapp app right so um, to do this the, there is a feature called linked devices all you okay. all you need is an iphone or any other uh, android phone hai na and then you have to search, uh, tap on the top right corner and select the option linked devices so the process is like very simple open the whatsapp app on on your ipad open the whatsapp app on, on your phone tap on the link devices and scan the qr code that is shown on the ipad and that is it whatsapp will automatically sync the same account uh, on your iphone uh, from your iphone to the ipad with all the messages media and everything all right 
so it is it is like a companion app which you said, but you can make say video calls, audio calls apart from say messaging, it does work quite smoothly I assume. Yeah, uh, the, the, the best part of this is that WhatsApp has not compromised uh, when it comes to features, right? You can still make uh, video and audio calls up to 32 people. Uh, okay. And then you can also, you know, interact with Meta AI right uh, on the iPad. And right. uh, apart from all these things, the end to end encryption is, is still intact. So you do not have to worry about, uh, you know, security breaches and flaws as such while uh, transferring, you know, the uh, chats and messages and calls from one device to another device. And one good part of his, it, this entire process is that you do not need your primary phone always connected or turned on for the WhatsApp version of the app to work. All right. All right. See, can, can someone who has say an iPhone, an iPad and a Mac uh, use it simultaneously on all three devices? So yes, uh, the linked devices feature is capped at up to four devices. You cannot link more than four devices at a time from your primary number, primary device, right? For instance, I have I have an iPhone, I have a Mac, I have a uh, let's say iPad, and I have another Android phone, right? My iPhone version of the app is the native app, so I can run uh, the same WhatsApp account on all the three devices. However, if I want to pair a fifth device, I'll have to remove one of the devices from the linked devices, and then I can pair it again. So yes, right. uh, in short, we can use uh, all the uh, devices with the same WhatsApp account at the same time, but it has to be up to four devices. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Shorya, for joining us on the show. Uh, WhatsApp for iPad has taken a long time to come. Perhaps now Meta will look at a standalone Instagram app for WhatsApp. Well, that's all for today on Tech Up. I am Abhas Sharma. Don't forget to subscribe to Money Control. Until next time, stay curious and stay kind.